Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. For this week's Sketchbook Sunday, we are going to do a marker sketch on marker paper, and I'm using the brand new Bienio marker paper and brush tip markers. Um, I'm basically getting used to these markers in this video because I'm going to be doing a um, big kind of how to color with brush tips versus chisel tip video, and that's gonna come up in a week or two. So I just wanted to get used to these markers and see how they were. And these tips are the foam tips, kind of like Copics have, um, and the other kind of mid a better mid grade uh, priced markers such as Blick Studio and um, I think the Pro Marker Brush Tip has a foam tip like this, so they're nice and resilient and very flexible. So if you are seeing these on Amazon and wondering the quality, they're very good. Um, so I'll have more about that when I do the longer video with these, but I just wanted to kind of get used to them and also get used to working on marker paper. And when you're working on marker paper, it's more of like a layering up than a blending like you would on like a Nina cardstock. So so, um, I thought it'd be fun to work in that method. Now you're gonna notice I probably went in a little darker than I should to begin with. I haven't swatched these markers out even yet. I just wanted to play because they just came and I was very excited to work with them. Um, I'm using a variety of different oranges in the set. Uh, by the time I do my big video using these, I will have swatches done. And I also need your help, so in the comments below, I'm gonna be offering a free uh, download line art illustration so we can all color together on the same thing. So when I'm teaching you how to blend and color, you'll be able to um, follow along with me. So I was thinking of maybe a fuchsia flower or a Gerber daisy flower, or if you have another idea, let me know, but I'm thinking something floral where I can get a variety of colors. Um, so I'd love your suggest suggestions down below, and um, then that will be just a download that you can print off yourself and you can color right either on your paper you print on or you can trace it onto marker paper if that's your preference. Um, but I just want some ideas to help pick out the illustration I'm gonna use for that. That's going to be um, a real-time demonstration, probably a mix of real-time and time-lapse because I don't wanna real-time all of the um, repetitive bits, but just to make sure that you know I, I'll do all the technique teaching in real time. But I would love your help on uh, subject matter if you would like to let me know. So because I know that I'm not gonna be blending out many of these um, these shapes I'm using like I'm making sure that when I put the strokes down like for the orange segments if I've cut across the grain I'm doing kind of dots if I have um, kind of cut with the grain of the orange I'm getting more of like little dashes going kind of radiating out from where the center of the orange would be just so I can build up the texture here um, this illustration actually took me quite a while it took me over an hour um, and I think it's just because I'm not quite used to working on marker paper as a card maker. I often use my my markers on Nina Classic cardstock because it's thicker. It just holds up on cards a little bit better. So this is um, a little new to me. And I've I've had some other pads of marker paper in the past, but the, sometimes the centers fall out off of the pad, and then I'm not sure what is the front and what is the back side of the paper. So sometimes I end up coloring on the back side, and it puddles, and it blends really well, but then... I'll realize, oh, that was the wrong side. So the thing about marker paper, it's really thin and translucent. So if you have a sketch, you can put it right behind your marker paper and and dra like trace it. So it's really kind of cool that way. And also it's got like a barrier on the back side. It must be like a plastic coating, kind of like, um, it, it's kind of like freezer paper, but it's not like plasticky. Um, but it's got definitely a barrier because even with all these layers of marker, it is not bleeding to the page underneath. But if I flip it over and look on the back side of the page, it looks almost like stained glass. It's like very translucent. It's got a really neat look. Um, so I figured I'd better do a few uh, practice pages on this paper you know, before I do the uh, the big video, because I also want to show the difference between coloring on a, car, a marker cardstock versus a um, marker paper, because marker paper is not going to buckle when you're using these markers on it. It's going to stay nice and flat. The only issues you're going to have with buckling is if you do some mixed media or you add some pencil and it ends up denting the paper, which you'll see later on in this video. Um, I end up going over with some paper or with some pencil, and then I'm like working in the through the pad later on that day, sitting on the couch watching TV, and I'm coloring. And I'm like, oh, I've totally made orange orange marks all over it, like orange outline marks on all of the other papers just because the pencil dented it so much. So it's just something to kind of kind of keep in mind. So you don't need to put like a piece of paper underneath this to protect your next sheet of marker paper, but if you're going to um, use like colored pencils on top, you might want to pull off that sheet of marker paper and use it on a clipboard or something so you don't end up uh, indenting your pages underneath. Um, so I'm basically just layering up here. Um, I wish I had swatched beforehand because, um, but then again, I was just playing. I just got these. I just wanted to play with them. Um, 
because swatching them will give you a much better idea than what the color code on the box or on the caps will give you. The caps are pretty decent, but nothing matches a swatch on the paper you typically use. This set, like I mentioned before, of markers is brand new. Um, there's 72 colors, and it seems to be the same colors that are in their chisel tip set of 72. Um, so if you're looking to upgrade, if you have the other one, because uh, the chisel tips have been out for a while. Um, but I this, these are completely new to me. I haven't really used the chisel tips at all. I'm just kind of getting used to them here right now. Um, but I'm very pleased with them. The, there's a great selection of oranges in this kit, orange shades. Um, I used some oranges, grays, and purples for this, so I didn't really get into all the colors. But then I was doing some blending practice later on in the day using like the feather blend technique on the marker paper, and they worked excellent. Um, so... Yeah, just, oh, right, what I'm doing here, this is a really great tip. It works better on cardstock or if you haven't oversaturated your paper, but if you take the clear blending marker and you dab it, if you want big dabs, use the brush tip. If you want smaller dabs or smaller kind of like texture, use the, um, the chisel tip because you can get on the edge and it will release less ink, but that will give you that onion, onion, orange peel texture that the orange peels have. Uh, so that's what I'm doing there just to give it a little bit of texture. Uh, I shouldn't have put so much ink down, honestly, if I wanted to get back to the white of the paper, but being a newbie to marker paper, not really a newbie, but unexperienced, I, I've used marker paper for years, but I've never like spent a lot of time on it. Um, I also found that if I use the chisel edge and with a really light touch, I can get a more of a glaze of color and not put quite so much down because this is a set of 72 colors. You're not going to have all the colors in the rainbow or all the pastel shades of them or whatnot, but there is a pretty good variety and you know, you have to learn when you, when you add a different paper into your repertoire, it, that's a whole new learning curve. You've got to learn how to work on that so that you know, you know how it's going to take the ink, you know how, um, how much it's going to stain, you'll know how much you can lift on it, you'll know how it will layer, you'll know if it will pill. Um, so that, and, and you're watching me practice, and that's what Sketchbook Sunday is all about, me getting some practice in that isn't necessarily perfect, that I am learning myself. That's why these are time lapse and not in real time, unless they're, um, sometimes I do them in real time for Critique Club, but the, I did not feel like I would be able to explain what I'm doing because I was just practicing here. Um, so I hope you find it relevant and helpful um, to see kind of how these layers build up. But my real, my real hope is that you will comment down below and let me know what you want me to offer for the free um, inked illustration download because I want to make sure I put something up there that's inspiring for you guys to color along with me because it's so much easier to learn when you are interested in your subject matter. So uh, so if you could help me out with that, that would be really excellent. I like this paper. I, I It seems very much the same as the Windsor Newton marker paper I've used before um, and the Canson marker paper and Strathmore marker paper and Premier marker paper. I really don't find a huge difference between these brands, but it could just be my inexperience with marker paper. It's like if you gave me a stack of watercolor paper, I could probably tell you the maker of each watercolor paper because and where someone would just be like it's watercolor paper um you know because i'm more used to using that and we're used to using watercolors so uh, this this paper seems great i didn't have any feathering issues which was surprising compared considering the massive amount of ink i'm using here um the thing about marker paper though is that it doesn't suck in as much ink as your cardstock will so if you are not interested in having a thick paper if you don't need that for a card making or you don't want that for card making um it's going to it's going to be a lot less um, use on your markers, which means your markers are not going to dry out quite as quickly. So that's something to consider um, if you're maybe an illustrator or, a, you, you know, you just want to color with markers. You don't care about making cards. The reason I would recommend cardstock for if you're making cards is that this paper is translucent. So if you're using this on a card, you'd either want to make sure whatever you have underneath it is white or you might want to like glue it onto some white cardstock just to make sure that you've got a nice opaque white behind there. Otherwise, it's going to be translucent. Then again, that might give you an ethereal look that you like, but if you put that on top of a pattern paper and you could kind of see the pattern through, that kind of might be cool too. So um, just know the qualities of the materials you're working with and um, and then you get greater variety as you're going. Now this is neat. I love using this really, really pale lilac color for my shadows here. Um, if I went over the yellow areas, it kind of went muddy, but over the orange, it was just enough off to give me a really natural looking shadow. These are Kara Kara oranges, which I, honestly, my family did not care for these oranges. They're a little too sweet for my taste. That's why I didn't eat them. I decided to sketch them instead because usually if my kids leave fruit left over, I would just 
eat it for my breakfast. Um, but I don't like these really sweet oranges. I'm not going to buy these again. But I think they made for a pretty interesting um, drawing a sample because they kind of have this corally, orangey, um, reddish fruit on the inside. They're not as light as like a navel orange. So I thought it was kind of an interesting um, interesting thing to use. If you hear my cat meowing, <laughs> she is like, uh, she's in the studio with me and she's just kind of like saying, okay, I'm bored now. I want to go. Let me out. Um, so I used a really pale gray. I think it was a cool gray one or two. And now I'm going in with a cool gray four. And this, um, you can see the cutting board that these oranges are on right on my screen there. You can see it's got that kind of uh, mottled texture. So I'm tapping, I'm, I'm kind of tapping with the tip of my, my uh, marker. I'm not going to try to get the whole background, the whole value as dark as the cutting board that it's on, but I just want to kind of make a vignette by adding that shadow around it. Um, as you can see, there's, well, I can see a little bit more where I'm sitting because I do have four lights pointed towards the center of my table to make sure it's nice and evenly lit. Um, I do have a couple different light sources, but I'm focusing on the more stronger light source as I'm uh, seeing it and kind of pulling out a little bit more. And then I'm going back in with a lighter color to diffuse it out a little bit. And, um, you know, I'm just trying to make so I... I mean, the, the shadows are kind of harsh, but I didn't want them to be so harsh. That's kind of a tough look to pull off unless you have a really strong, like, single light source. So um, I am just kind of trying to diffuse it a little bit because it's a little easier to fake it when you've got a diffuse shadow um, because I don't want to turn off three of my lights. It wouldn't be bright enough to film. And my 40, almost, my 43, almost year old eyes have a hard time with, uh, uh, with dim coloring situations. <laughs> so I decided that I would. So do you ever do that are you in your 40s you forget how old you are sometimes I'm like yeah, I'm 37 no I'm not I am gonna be 43 this summer so I I kind of free you forget I think you forget after about 35 how old you are maybe I don't know I don't know when that 40 hits that's that's pretty <laughs> that's a pretty good awakening um so I'm going in here I'm adding a little bit of a darker purple too in some of these shadows just because I think it gives a nice richness and depth but doesn't muddy it and um I'm getting a really uh I, I like the crisp look actually the thing is with marker paper, another thing, because the paper's translucent and it and it soaks really quick, um, it's going to look darker than it is. So when you are working here, and um, I'm actually grabbing some colored pencils, that's why nothing's happening on the screen right now, um, you're going to notice it looks really dark and it can be kind of scary, but then if you let it dry, you're going to notice it recharge back to the normal color. So um, it's just because that paper is wet and, it stay, and because it's such a thin... Um, paper that's got that backing that doesn't let it seep through your the surface stays wet and then you're gonna it's gonna just gonna look really dark while it's wet just like watercolor but as it dries you return back to the normal color you're not seeing that water kind of like sticking to the paper and making it making it uh, darker than it is. So I'm going in with some Prismacolor colored pencils. Now this is a really slick paper, so you're not going to be able to lay down a ton of color. So just be judici judicious when you do it. Um, use your, you know, your white first, get that, get those highlights in wherever you want it. And then you can go in with some of the other colors. Um, I just want a little bit to get some texture. Um, I also would recommend if you think you might want to use a gel pen, I'd probably use that before the colored pencil because that waxy, the, the marker paper almost feels a little waxy to begin with. It's got a very smooth tooth to it. Um, and so that in itself makes it hard for a colored pencil to stick, but it almost has like a little bit of a waxy surface. And then when you put the colored pencil on top, you're giving it more of that waxy surface. So then if you want to go over it with a gel pen, or a paint, a paint pen, it's going to be a little bit tougher to stick. Um, so just kind of, I would do your brightest highlights with a gel pen first before you do the color pencil. So quick tip there. I love adding fluorescent color pencil on top of um, illustrations done with marker, especially if I want to bring out a little bit of a glow. It works really good for that. Um, I'm not sure if the Prismacolor still makes the, color, the fluorescent colors anymore, but there are other brands that do if they don't. Um, I don't think it really matters what brand you go over there. As long as it, you know, is soft enough to stick to the paper, I think you're good. Um, I feel like I've tried almost every type of, I haven't tried all the Caran d'Ache pencils because they're really expensive, but I feel like I've tried almost every colored pencil and I always come back to Prismacolor. Um, this is probably the first colored pencils I ever used and they're still my favorite, but I, that could just be because of the first pencils I ever used. Now with this white, I'm able to catch that kind of like dried around the edges look that the rind has um, because these were cut, you know, a couple hours earlier and I saw them on the table. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do that for my, for my sketch. I love to, I love it when I can use something real for Sketchbook Sunday that I can actually pick up and examine if I want to, because I'm practicing. I want to get better. Um, I'm not afraid of making mistakes or not doing it perfectly uh, in these videos. Um, 
And I, I want to encourage you not to be afraid to make mistakes and to try and even take those mundane things. Sometimes something mundane like this, these are oranges that are going to be thrown up to the birds in a few minutes. Um, I'm not afraid of wasting something expensive or, you know, like a precious artichoke that I bought just to sketch. You know, I'm not worried about that. I'm going to take this mundane object that I haven't put any big precious expectations on and I am going to sketch it. The jelly roll pen, I, I got the, uh, one of these white jelly rolls in a smart art box, not my favorites. I don't recommend that gel pen. I really recommend a white Posca fine tip pen like this here. I also like the um, Uniball Signo Broad Gel Impact gel pen. Um, those two pens are ideal. You can actually get packs with both of them in there on Amazon. The nice thing about the Posca is you can actually take the top off and refill it. And I use a thin down block out white acrylic paint when I refill mine. Um, so that's nice too. I love it when I can reuse something because who hate to run out of something in the middle of a project. You can fix it and refill it. And then I'm just adding some little dots to give it that onion. Why do I want to say onion peel? Orange peel texture. Um, and that's pretty much all I'm going to do to this sketch. Um, it just tweak it a little bit, but that's it. And if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. I will have a link to all the products I used in the video description and let me know what you think about the subject matter for the in-depth coloring tutorial I'm going to be doing soon. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.